Alexandra Warden is a marine microbial ecologist at Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. I study the smallest photosynthetic eukaryotes uh, on the planet. Picoeukaryotes are um, very tiny eukaryotic cells, less than two microns in diameter, which is about a fiftieth of the width of a human hair. And um, they include the smallest free-living eukaryotes on the planet. The organisms I work on, these picoeukaryotes, are important because they do photosynthesis. So um, effectively, they're like the plants of the ocean. Warden has been a frequent participant in the DOE JGI's Community Sequencing Program, leading marine microbial sequencing projects in 2005 and 2007. These cells are so small that they're very hard to characterize just by looking at them. And so what we really need to do is look at all the genes they contain to see if we can understand more about their ecology than we could do just by sort of monitoring their numbers and dynamics. The results of those genomic studies have opened a window into the microscopic world of picoeukaryotes. Oh, we've learned amazing things. So, um, number one, they're much more diverse than we would have thought. Even two picoeukaryotes thought to be the same species have 10% um, of their genes not held in common, which is much more than we expect humans and, uh, for instance, other primates have 98% of their genes in common. So that 10% means they're able to access the environment differently. And it also means that as the environment changes, um, these different populations will be subject to different effects, so we don't know that they'll respond in the same way as the environment changes. The implications of the work for carbon cycling and the environment are really that we know these groups are very diverse, um, but we have very little sense of how they each grow and respond in the environment. So what we do right now when we make measurements is something like taking from mouse up through elephants, including humans, and, and birds, adding them all together, mushing them up, measuring the amount of carbon, uh, measuring maybe how much food they use, measuring the respiration. If you want to go back and understand how the populations change, again, with things like climate change, you would never know that those polar bears are going to die if we don't have that polar system, for example. So we're really trying to um, tease apart how these different groups will respond so that we can then have more predictive capabilities for which ones might be lost and how that would affect our lives as well. Warden is spearheading a 2009 community sequencing program project to sequence genomes of predatory, single-celled marine organisms that feed on picoeukaryotes and other small plankton. One of our goals is really to understand the global carbon cycle. We know the photosynthetic populations are very diverse and um, that they, again, respond to different environmental parameters. We also know that the organisms that eat them, these predatory protists, um, sense prey differently, and, but we don't know how they do it. So we're trying to understand that because ultimately the prey they select to eat dictates which of those prey really might be moved into what's called the biological pump where carbon is removed from the atmosphere by this photosynthetic activity and brought into the deep ocean. What we hope is that we can detect genes that might relate to how they sense prey um, and detect genes that uh, dictate how the prey grow and use those as new tools to better understand their activity and specifically the activity of each different group. Because if we want to model how the system might change with say one degree temperature change, um, we actually have to know something about their physiology so that we can shift them in our models. Right now we're at a really crucial time for the environment. Um, and I think we could do much better in, in how we interact with the environment. Um, being informed about how different organisms are affected or which ones might succeed uh, versus which might lose as, as we continue to impact the environment um, is 
having information about that is something that we can then guide our decisions in a better way and guide policy in a better way so that we can keep this whole uh, system functional for, for many years to come. Thank you.